Hey guys, it is um, Thursday, June 15th, 2023, and this is going to be a quick commentary on the futures market and some mistakes in my understanding uh, that I've had. So I've taken a few steps back. I felt like I was moving forward uh, for a while there, and some things that I've come to realize um, I want to, well, tell you where I've been more successful and where I've been less successful. So, I've tend to, I have tended to have done better in lower volatility markets. So last week I did really well, um, and this week I haven't done as well. Um, so last week was a lower volatility environment, more range bound, and I did a lot better in that. And um, I'll talk about the reasons why. Uh, but basically, a, a couple of key mistakes uh, that uh, that I have made that I want to go over, and obviously, you know, I don't expect my videos to get any sort of views. This is really just my own video journaling, and then obviously, I keep a physical trading journal as well. I keep one for my own live trading, and then one for um, Michael's videos. So, going forward. Um, ICT or Inner Circle Trader has indicated that he wants to just be Michael. So, out of respect for him, I'm just going to refer to him as Michael. Um, so, if if you hear me say that Michael says this or Michael says that, I'm referring to um, Inner Circle Trader because he has he has said that he would like to be called Michael. So, I will call him Michael. Um, I. You know, what's crazy about watching, he had a five hour long video today, and yes, I was watching it, and yes, I will be rewatching it this weekend. He almost seems to read my thoughts, which is crazy, but um, yeah, he knows me a lot. He knows me really well. It's crazy. Um, uh, but, anyways, <clears throat> so a couple of the key mistakes that I've been making is number one, I have been using the wicks and tails of the candles to do uh, an analysis, and that's just because I've been I, I've I've really been trying to get like very exact entries. And last week in a low a low volatility environment, um, I was pretty regularly getting in at the bottom tick or the top tick. But this week, with a much higher volatility environment, uh, that is that has not been the case at all. Um, second mistake that I think that I've been making is I've been trying to apply a sort of mechanical system that takes out the discretion and what I've come to realize is that uh, if you're going to trade this style of trading or Michael's style of trading you you have to use your discretion. Um, you have to analyze the market in the manner that he talks about and then come to a reasoned conclusion as to where you think that price is drawing and what it's doing on these uh, on the weekly monthly and daily time frame and so I guess the closest thing to a mechanical model that you could use would be the model 2022 but even then um, the the model 22s come in various shapes and sizes and you still have to use your discretion as you know what you think actually counts for stops taken and what you think counts as a real market structure shift and then looking for opposing liquidity I mean all of those factors that go into a good model 22 you still have to use your discretion on so for the past week or so I've been trying not the past week but like four or five days I've been trying to just enter in on these 50 percent levels and they work sometimes sometimes they're incredibly accurate but when it's the wrong level and you're trying to front run it, it doesn't really work. So when the market was range bound last week and it wasn't moving as much, wasn't as volatile, um, I had more, you know, more accuracy with that. So I've definitely done better in the lower volatility environment. Um, so that's something to, to note moving forward. And then also, you know, as Michael says, you you have to analyze the bodies of the candles in your analysis and then um, 
the, the wicks do the damage. So the only thing that I really see him in terms of, of using the wicks and the tails for um, analysis is that he will call a, a wick or a tail into an inefficiency, a reprice or a redelivery, and then he'll also use it for uh, like IOFED entry models. But in terms of when he's talking about his draws on liquidity or uh, inefficiencies, he, he's definitely focusing on on the story, and that and that's the bodies of the candles. Now, speaking on that subject, I want to talk about that for a minute. So let's go into the ES. So we talked about the bodies of the candles being the story, right? And so let's talk about this price action here, and this was FOMC yesterday. Now, he talked about FOMC being a two-step process. But, you know, these accounts, especially these funded accounts, um, are pretty strict uh, with, with your rules and how much drawdown you can take. And the thing is, is that really the whole story for, these are 15-minute candles, for like an hour was right here in the pink box. And the story was, initially, you know, here, our move on FOMC, we were actually consolidating for an hour with severe damage and just clearing out liquidity on both sides. And this is the kind of price action that I have real difficulty with because what you have to do in your mind's eye is you have to strip away the wicks and then look at what the bodies are respecting. And he talked about it today, but but basically the bodies of these candles were respecting well above the 50% of this balance price range. And then we obviously ended up... Um, price ended up delivering up to an inefficiency that was higher. So uh, balanced price ranges are one thing that he covered today. And I'm glad that he covered it because he hasn't, I don't think, you know, I've watched a lot of his stuff and, and he, he mentions balanced price ranges, but he, he never really got into it as much as he did today. So, you know, you have to imagine in your mind's eye that these long ass wicks don't you know these wicks don't exist but w when you're actually in a position obviously you know the, this is real price action and so your analysis has to be done with the bodies of the candles but at the same time you know in terms of your actual trading if you see that the market's making these really long wicks you know you need to lower the you need to lower the leverage basically because they can do a lot of damage you know the bodies of these candles are respecting uh, the 25% or the 50%. They, they all closed well above the 50% of this balanced price range. And then obviously we, the market ended up delivering uh, a buy side inefficiency. But um, if you're actually sitting here in a trade, you know, it's going up and down and up and down a lot. And um, this week we've seen a lot more of this sort of um, thin market action or thin book long wick same thing on the nasdaq and that you know makes it very difficult in terms of actually trading it but the analysis actually remains the same so my recommendation is that i i would see that on a higher volatility week like this where you're getting these thinly traded scenarios i would lower the leverage um, cause you even see that, right. If you're using his, if you're using that, the bodies tell the story, well, look, even here, you see that the bodies that, uh, what is this form right on at seven thirty this morning? So the seven thirty news embargo lift, look at how the body of this candle, you know, we get that, we get the wick lower four points, five points. But the body of the candle is respecting this balance price range, okay? And it doesn't want to close below that balance price range. And then when you see that price trades above the, sw the swing high that took you to the low, and so it's shifting structure here after, after the bodies of the candles are respecting a balance price range, and then you see lots of buy stops that can be taken, and then obviously we have um, higher time frame inefficiencies I could find on the... Uh, continuous chart. Um, let's go take a look at our... So on the monthly chart, part of what price is drawing to in my mind would be this wick. 
Let's take a look at the weekly chart. Weekly chart shows us that at least here on the September contract, the ES has been trading up into this inefficiency. Um, we'll call it right here, this, this gap. And so it's drawing up into this gap up into 4560, and it's been drawing up here for the, about the past three weeks. And um, we also just delivered, we just had a weekly delivery of a fair value, fair value gap right here that I'm highlighting. We actually just delivered uh, 4473. So we might actually find some, find some uh, resistance here. Now we have gaps uh, lower. So we have a gap at 4273 that I've highlighted. Um, we also have a little gap here at like 4350. And then in terms of our inverted fair value gaps, we're also looking at 43.22 down to 42.37. So we have inefficiencies lower, and the S&P just delivered a fair value gap that we had from uh, 11th April and 25th April. So this 44.73. Now, the S&P might continue drawing up to the next gap, but I don't know yet exactly if it wants to do that. Um, one of the things that, he, that Michael talked about today was that price can only do two things. It is either drawing to an inefficiency or it is drawing to uh, sweep liquidity or take liquidity. So, And of those two things that price is doing, the first thing that it's going to reach for is an inefficiency. So. <clears throat> When we're looking at this ES chart, for example, there's no need for us to immediately look at liquidity because we, we have plenty of inefficiencies uh, on this chart to examine. So we have an inefficiency up to 45.74 that price might continue to drop into. We just delivered this fair value gap at 44.71. Now going into tomorrow, since we did just deliver that weekly fair value gap, it is possible that the market might want to come down and be attracted to liquidity down at 43.94, our previous day low. I'm not saying that's going to happen, but it's possible. I would continue to bet on the upside at least up to 45.36, which is the consequent encroachment of the second gap that we have up here, 45.37. I'm going to continue to bet that um, we're drawing up into the next gap because, as Michael said today, we focus first on the inefficiencies and liquidity second. <clears throat> So that's a couple of things I wanted to mention. Um, you have to use your discretion when you're trading this uh, system. You, you have to analyze, you know, Michael said today that you spend the most time on the weekly chart, and I definitely have not been doing that. Um, and, uh, you know, you're always framing this thing in, in terms of inefficiencies first, liquidity second. So I do want to pat myself on the back for a trade that I took today because I want to feel, uh, you know, somewhat optimistic. So I'm going to look at the Russell 2000. Now, take a look at the Russell 2000, and we always start our analysis on the weekly chart. So Russell 2000 recently delivered a weekly fair value gap up to uh, 1928. Okay, so... Once price reached that 1928, you can see that we immediately traded lower, and the next two days' objective was it was seeking liquidity. So it delivered uh, overnight tonight, I think, or in the AM session. We delivered price's objective of sell side liquidity. So on the weekly chart, the Russell 2000 re delivered 1928, which was a weekly level that we were looking at. We delivered it immediately after. Hitting that 1928, the Russell 2000 uh, began seeking liquidity. Now, this morning, okay, if we drill down to our 15 minute time frame, we see that we delivered uh, sell, side, sell side liquidity at 8.30 Eastern Standard Time. So we, on that news driver event, the Russell 2000 delivered sell side. Now, when we're looking at pools of liquidity, one of the things that Michael talks about is um, in the same token that you want to look for weekly and daily inefficiencies first, and even monthly inefficiencies, but a lot of time spent on the weekly chart, is the same thing when you're looking for liquidity. A lot of liquidity, if price is 
if price's current objective is to seek liquidity, the big levels that you want to look at is previous days low and previous weeks low. And if you can get multiple previous days and previous weeks low in the same, same, uh, at the same price, that's even better. But uh, we call it um, uh, PWL and PDL, so previous week low and previous day low. And that you only look at that if price uh, has recently delivered an inefficiency or if the market has traded efficiently. So if the market is currently trading efficiently, there's no obvious draw on liquidity in terms of an inefficiency on the weekly, monthly, or daily time frame, then you assume that the, the other thing that the market's going to do is it's going to go down to seek liquidity. So with that in mind, um, I saw that the Russell 2000, now these are things that I actually did see today. The Russell 2000 came down. Okay and we delivered sell side liquidity with this wick on the 730 news driver but if we do our analysis right if we're if we're creating a narrative we want to use the bodies of the candles not the wicks so the wicks delivered sell side but the bodies are telling the story so this was a news driver uh, it was a Judas swing and I noticed that and look at how our body was respecting this wick inefficiency that we had uh, Wednesday. Okay, so today's Thursday, so yesterday's. Look at how the body of that candle was respecting it. Immediately, my mind went to Russell 2000 wants to, now that we've delivered sell side liquidity, I'm thinking, okay, if we're going higher, I was looking for uh, a four hour inefficiency and these one hour inefficiencies. And lo and behold, it took us until the afternoon session but take a look right there okay russell 2000 after delivering sell side liquidity went to uh re-deliver a buy side uh a sibi or sell side sell side imbalance buy side inefficiency fair value gap right up here at that 1912.2 it it missed it by one tick it left a one tick gap one tick gap and where I realized, where I got in the trade, I, I wish I could tell you I got in the trade way down at the bottom. I didn't. But during his video lecture today, he was talking about balanced price ranges. And basically, a balanced price range is where price has gone up and down, up and down, and then it leaves that area. So this right here was a balanced price range that I was looking at. I was actually looking right here. As we have price come in, it comes up, it comes down, and it comes back up. So this up and down like that and then a, a slight move higher this is a um, what I would call a balanced price range okay efficient price delivery now you could also just call it a fair value gap here either way I think I think this would be classified as a balanced price range right because there's lots of up and down uh, movement now right around here okay I started noticing so what I did and this is just positive self-talk. As I drew my uh, Fibonacci with the uh, 0, 25, 50, 75, and 100. So this is the Fibonacci that I use to see whether price is respecting um, a fair value gap or an inefficiency. And I noticed that on the Russell 2000, we were dipping down below that uh, fair value gap. Okay, that fair value gap low which is at 1891.2. We were dipping down below it, but look at how the bodies of the candles didn't want to close below that 75, okay? And I was watching that happen. I was like, well, price does not appear on this 15-minute bellwether time frame to want to come down and close uh, close below 1891.2. So it appeared, it appeared to me that price was respecting this fair value gap. And if I could see that price was closing and respecting this fair value gap and we were trading above prior inefficiencies, and, I'm, and I also identify that we had um, inefficiencies higher, I went, okay, this is a, this is a pretty model setup here, um, like a really a money-making setup. We had sell-side delivery um, in terms of we had daily sell-side liquidity taken, okay? We had the swing that took us to the low, we closed above it, so we had a market structure shift. 
We then had a balanced price range and then bodies of candles all the way up until thir up until the PM session. Okay, up until the PM session, all throughout this time, the Russell 2000 was respecting this balanced price range for about two hours. And so I accumulated a few longs here on my um, evaluation accounts. And lo and behold, it, it uh, delivered within one pip, delivered uh, a, just a beautiful move. And this was, um, I think, like 10 or 15 points. And it's $50 a point on the Russell 2000. So, you know, a good chunk of change, really. Way better than your, way better than your uh, salary job, put it that way, your wage job. Um, so anyways, uh, I want to just give myself a little bit of credit, some positive self-talk that I did, I did see this happen. And I was watching it live and I was analyzing the bodies instead of the wicks. I included the, the wick on 830 and I was like, that looks like it, that's the right time for a Judas swing. That's in daily sell side liquidity after we delivered a weekly, uh, a weekly inefficiency. The market came down and it hunted sell side liquidity. Now it's, and then it came back up to um, come in and re, re deliver this uh, inefficiency here. Now, I don't know if the Russell 2000 is done moving up on the hourly time frame. We have another uh, sell side imbalance, buy side inefficiency, or SIBI that is higher. And that's located up around 1920. I would tend to I, I tend to think that tomorrow the Russell is going to want to come in and uh, price is going to want to come in and roll back over paint back over 1920. I, I I would tend to think that that is probably going to happen. I I'm not sure that this move up today in terms of having taken out a lot of liquidity here if that was enough to offset distribute uh, smart money's longs I doubt it was it probably does need to move up to 1920 at least this next inefficiency and then we'll see what the Russell 2000 does from there now if we are going to move down it's the one thing I'd be looking at in terms of the Russell 2000 if price starts to move down on the daily time frame tomorrow I'd be looking at 1854 because that's a that's our next uh, volume imbalance now if we close this week uh, without forming a new low, this is going to be a large discount fair value gap on the Russell 2000 that at some point price is probably going to want to come in and re-deliver. Okay, now when it wants to do that, I don't know. Now the Russell 2000 also has an inefficiency higher that we might continue to draw up into. And I'm looking at 1953 spot 2 because we have a gap here on the September contract that's sitting up here. So. Anyways, I wanted to get over that, guys. You have to use the bodies of the candles to tell the story. If you look at something like gold, gold is tough because the bodies of these candles are all very small, and they're actually just telling you that the market here wanted to go down. But look at this huge wick at 830 that went up to 1985. I mean, it's tough, right? You're probably going to have to use a huge stop loss on gold. Because if you're using the bodies of the candles to analyze where price is in relation to a recent inefficiency and whether it's respecting it or not, um, you know the bo the bodies of the candles are telling you the story, but the wick is is ten dollars long on gold, and so you can already be liquidated on a ten dollar long wick, even though your story is correct. So, you know you need to be careful with gold. I'd recommend trading gold very small for that reason, especially during a volatile week like this. Um, so other than that, that's kind of all that I wanted to talk about. Um, make sure that you're using the bodies of the candles for your analysis. Make sure that you're referencing the weekly draws on liquidity. That's the first thing. Make sure that you're using inefficiencies as your primary tool. And if there are no inefficiencies, then or if price has recently delivered a higher time frame inefficiency, then look for liquidity, especially your previous weeks and previous months and previous days. So your higher time frames, like your daily highs and lows. If price is seeking liquidity, the most obvious spot in terms of where institutional order order flow should be would be below, uh, above and below previous days highs and lows, and above and below uh, previous weeks highs and lows, especially the last week. Um, but that is that. 
Uh, and the other thing is, is yeah, you can't you can't really trade this as a mechanical system. Um, I don't think Michael recommends that, other than maybe Model Twenty Two. But you have to you have to use your discretion. You have to learn what price is trying to do, what it's likely to do, and um, what it's showing you. And then you have to use your discretion from there. I I definitely don't think that I can trade trade in this manner using a purely mechanical system and take my own take my own judgment out of it. That I tried I've tried that now and it's it's not going to work. You you definitely have to apply your own noggin to the joggin. So okay, that's all I wanted to mention today. Um, my final prog- prognosis for the S and P five hundred is I, I I do think we're gonna at least draw to the consequent encroachment of this gap up at 45 45 i think there's more to go um probably yeah like another 100 points um it looks to me like the s p even though we did just deliver a weekly fair value gaps i I think it probably wants to come up and trade into this liquidity void uh volume imbalance up around at least the consequent encroachment so 45 45 I, I, that's what i think prices is, is looks like on the weekly time frame that it's reaching for if it's not then we're going to come down and we have inefficiencies below so that's it for today bye bye